Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Navy Cross Award Ceremony for Corporal Daniel L. Heller, United States Marine Corps. Please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Please be seated. It is a privilege to have as our awarding official this morning, the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Eric M. Smith. Well, good morning. great to have so many of you here and Corporal Heller if you'll look around you'll see some of your fellow corporals uh, just a, a newer version uh, in the back because uh, the Navy Cross is, uh, is not something that, that we do every day in fact it is our nation's second highest award for valor and it is a, a true privilege to have you here today to your wife Christine and your family, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting your husband, your father, because it's, uh, it's a long road and we're finally here. It's not often that we get the opportunity to correct an oversight that's nearly 60 years old and to honor a Marine who so exemplifies the courage and commitment that define our Corps. Corporal Daniel Heller's actions on February 13, 1969 were extraordinary and it's time that we give them the recognition that they deserve. Before we get into the details of that day I want to thank Secretary of the Navy Del Toro, Congressman Steve Shabit and his staff and especially First Lieutenant Bob Palisade for their work in ensuring Corporal Heller receives the recognition he deserves after so many years. Thank you for guaranteeing that this moment could happen. And thank you also to the Marines who served with Corporal Heller, who are here with us today. We are here to honor his deeds, but we also know that no award truly belongs to one individual. Every heroic action is enabled by the team around the Marine who does the action. Leadership, other Marines, friends and family who provide fortitude to keep pushing. They all also are recipients of this award. Thanks to each of you for what you did. Now let's turn the clock back 55 years to the Republic of Vietnam. Corporal Heller was a new father. He had just learned of his first son's birth while he was participating in Operation Dewey Canyon. And on 13 February 1969, he was leading 3rd Squad of 3rd Platoon, Company C, 1st Battalion, 9th Marines, on a patrol through a small valley. Visibility was poor, with thick high grass on all sides. At around 1400, they found themselves in a well-laid ambush. 
the enemy had set a trap, a U-shaped ambush, where the terrain and positioning, not to mention superior numbers and firepower, gave them every advantage. The enemy forces had prepared well. They used the dense foliage to conceal their positions, and once Corporal Heller's squad was fully committed in the valley, the ambush was sprung. The North Vietnamese opened fire with mortars, rocket-propelled grenades, machine guns, and automatic rifles. Just think about that. Think about that hell raining down on you. Machine guns, mortars, automatic rifles, and RPGs. It was a well-coordinated ambush, and the situation was dire. In this terrible position, Corporal Heller rose to the occasion and displayed the leadership and courage for which Marine NCOs are known. When the call came from his platoon sergeant to flank the enemy and relieve the pressure on his pinned down comrades, Corporal Heller took immediate action. Without hesitation, he led his squad in a bold maneuver to the left flank, knowing full well that he would be exposing himself to enemy fire. As they advanced, the point man in his squad was hit, and then another Marine behind him went down. In that moment, Corporal Heller made a decision that would change the outcome of the battle. Disregarding his own safety, he ran through the enemy fire, reached his wounded Marines, and carried them back to safety one by one. Each trip across that battlefield was a journey through hell, with enemy rounds snapping through the air all around him. But Corporal Heller's focus was on his Marines, getting them out, getting them to medical care. And he didn't stop there. After ensuring his wounded Marines were taken care of, Corporal Heller went back into the fight. He saw that his machine gunner's weapon had jammed, a critical situation in a fight like this. Without missing a beat, he took the weapon, cleared the jam, and directed the machine gunner to suppress the enemy positions. This act alone helped stabilize the situation and allow his squad to regain the initiative. Still, the fight was far from over. As the battle raged on, more enemy forces emerged, turning the ambush into an attack. Corporal Heller, displaying the leadership and courage that defined the Marine Corps, continued to lead his squad, directing their fire and their movements. Corporal Heller had been wounded by RPG fragmentation to his face and his shoulder, yet he refused medical treatment by his platoon's Navy corpsman. And at this point, Corporal Heller sensed an opportunity. He moved ahead of his squad, confronted four enemy soldiers head-on, and engaged them in close combat. He killed all four with accurate M16 fire, single-handedly preventing them from overrunning his men. That heroic action would turn the tide of the battle and lead to the destruction of the enemy. These actions were not just about survival. They were about saving the lives of his fellow Marines, about refusing to let the enemy dictate the terms of the battle and ultimately about winning. Corporal Heller's leadership and bravery turned the tide of that battle. His actions broke the enemy's momentum and allowed his platoon to regain the initiative, ultimately forcing the enemy to withdraw. For these actions, Corporal Heller was originally awarded the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal. But as we stand here today, it is clear to all of us that his actions went far beyond the criteria for that medal. Today, we rectify that by awarding him the Navy Cross, our nation's second highest award for valor. This is not just about correcting the record. It is about ensuring that the legacy of Marines like Corporal Heller is honored in the way it should be. We often say in the Marine Corps that we stand on the shoulders of giants. Corporal Heller, your actions that day showed us all what it means to be a Marine. You led from the front. You protected your brothers, and you fought with skill and ferocity. Your courage, your leadership, and your dedication are what make you one of those giants on whose shoulders we stand. And perhaps equally as inspiring as your actions in the Corps is the life you lived afterwards, how you embodied the motto of Semper Fidelis, always faithful. It's no secret that we did not treat our returning Vietnam veterans with the respect that they deserved. And when Corporal Heller tried to join his local VFW branch, he was turned away. But that didn't stop him from keeping in touch and caring for his old comrades and their families. Corporal Larry Whitehead was just 19 when he was killed in action on that very same day in Vietnam. He was a machine gunner in 3rd Platoon, and for decades, every year after he passed, Corporal Heller visited Larry's family to honor his memory. 
and there was fellow Marine Lance Corporal Eddie Oliver, who was killed in action just a week later, on the 20th of February. Years later, Corporal Heller learned that Eddie's family couldn't afford a headstone for their family plot, and that just wouldn't do, not for one of Corporal Heller's Marines. Eddie has a headstone now, thanks to Duke, to honor his friend and fellow Marine, and to bring some solace to his family. And those aren't the only stories of Corporal Heller's selfless dedication to honoring the memory and the valor of the fallen. But they certainly paint a picture of the type of man he is, not only in Vietnam, but every day of his life. Corporal Heller, on behalf of all Marines, thank you for your service and sacrifice that means so much to so many. Your actions are now and will always be a proud part of Marine Corps history. Now, if you're ready, it's my great privilege to present you with the Navy Cross. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated for the award presentation. Attention to orders. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Navy Cross to Corporal Daniel L. Heller, United States Marine Corps, for service as set forth in the following citation. For extraordinary heroism on 13 February 1969, while serving with Company C, 1st Battalion, 9th Marines, in the Republic of Vietnam. When Corporal Heller's platoon was taken under intense fire by an entrenched North Vietnamese Army force, the lead squad and platoon commander were trapped in a hail of mortar, rocket-propelled grenade, machine gun, and small arms fire. As Corporal Heller maneuvered his squad to flank the enemy, two of his Marines were felled by gunfire. Without hesitation or concern for his own safety, he rushed forward and carried the wounded point man back to a makeshift aid station. Moving forward to retrieve the second casualty, he paused to clear a jammed M60 machine gun and got the weapon back in action. As he reached the second wounded Marine, an RPG explosion severely wounded both of them. Undaunted, he carried the other Marine back to the aid station but refused treatment for his own painful wounds. He returned to the fight and single-handedly charged four approaching enemy soldiers, vanquishing all of them. This bold and daring act inspired his squad to violently attack the enemy and drive them from the battlefield. By his courage, relentlessness, and loyal devotion to duty, Corporal Heller reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest, highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. For the President, signed, Carlos Del Toro, Secretary of the Navy. Everybody, uh, I, I just want everybody to know I appreciate everything that uh, I've done 
Uh, it's been done for me today. Uh, um, my lieutenant, Lieutenant Powell, say, um, I'm glad he could make it down here. He's got a sister that's ill. Um, he's a big part of what's happening now. Uh, him and my platoon sergeant, Don Myers, who passed away some time ago, uh, they wouldn't give up on this. And uh, I appreciate them and everything that has, you know, has been done for me. Uh, I appreciate the Commandant presenting me with this. Uh, you know, the Commandant, uh, sort of like the Emperor of Japan back when I was in, you, you know, you wouldn't even allowed to look at him, so. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I just uh, wanted to thank uh, Lieutenant Palisade, my platoon sergeant Donald Myers from Indianapolis, uh, Captain Murphy, who I don't know if he's here or not, but I think he is. But uh, there he is, back in the back. Uh, I, I appreciate everything you guys did to uh, push us through. Um, yeah, uh, like I told the commandant, and the, you know, uh, as time went on, I just kind of swooped under the rug. Uh, I figured, you know, uh, I wasn't wasn't going to be uh, privileged enough to get something. But uh, I, and that day, I I didn't do it for a Navy Cross. It, hell, I, I never even uh, I never even heard of a Navy Cross. So, but, uh, uh, it's, I'm glad for all the family that came down, and I appreciate them all. Uh, you know, it's uh, been a long, long, windy road here, but uh, here I am. You know, amazing. You know. But, uh, you guys, uh, take care because, uh, you know, like they, uh, like they told me, don't ever let the Marines schedule your vacation because they don't ever go anyplace nice, so. But, uh, besides that, uh, I just, uh, I'm just thankful for everything that's happened here, so, and, uh, I just uh, want to say simplify, and uh, how about them jar heads? Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the Marines hymn. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. On behalf of Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., thank you for your attendance and Semper Fidelis.